subscribe. Hello Linux people, this is Continuarization by Linux Medi. Please, before we start, subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you will be notified each time a new video is posted. To begin with, this we will be focusing on RHCSA and using Portman to run containers. You can see our not so good drawing on the board, which is right here. I call it the not so good drawing because uh, it's not so good, but the human mind works best with what drawings or images. Let's keep it simple and that will solve the complexity of containers that some people face. Okay, by the end of this, you should be able to get 100% on ROHCSA. You should be able to get 100% on containerization. So, looking at our drawing, uh, we will say, what is a container? What is a container? What is this thing? I know people will say the con a container is what? The running instance of a container image, which all that it's a little bit difficult, or the con a container packages applications and the runtime environment to that is way too much for my mind. Let me keep it simple. Understand the simplicity, then the complexity will be solved by itself. So saying what is a container? Looking at our board, you see there is container A, B. C, D. These are all containers, right? So these are not all containers on a ship. We have our ship cap captain portman, and we have something like uh, the water. Let's call it the OS, right? The container shares what? The uh, the container. Uh, sorry, the containers on the the operating system hosted on the operating system shares what? It shares the resources, right? In other words, we are saying that these containers distribute using container technology, like the ship right here, it distributes what? System resources. It distributes system resources. Wherever the ship is touching, it's taking that weight, the weight of the ship at that point, right? So that it's, it's sharing the system resources. All right. The only person that manages these containers is the ship captain, of course, which is either Portman or Docker, but we will be concentrating on Portman. It's either Portman or Docker. We will be concentrating on Portman. What happens is you can notice that container A and container B, the contents are different. We can be we can have um Mercedes in here like transporting their cars and in here we can have what Walmart in here. We can have Amazon transporting something. This container will never know that this is Walmart's container. This one will never know that this is Portman's. Uh, sorry, this is Mercedes container transporting cars, right? The only person that knows that is Portman because Portman can open this container. Portman can remove the car. Portman can work on what on any of these containers. So Portman is the container management tool use it it is used to manage these containers it can create them it can delete them of course that is what the ship captain does on the container so i will keep it simple looking at um portman we say portman is agentless right what do we mean by portman is agentless portman is agentless meaning you don't need to run Portman as a system service. You don't need to do a system CTL start anything. Once you install container tools, you are good to go with Portman. We say uh, you can run them, you can run containers as what? Root or rootless. Containers with Portman, you can run them as root or rootless. What does this mean? You know, uh, in the system, there are some privileges that only the root user can give or can use and also only the root user can interact with certain elevated uh, system 
uh, commands. But with containerization, the technology is so good that with root, you can run containers as rootless. You can still run containers. We will be running containers mostly as rootless because that is what is recommended. Then you see the word registries. What are registries? Now, registries host what? Container images. Like It's like a repository, right? That hosts your data, your packages. Remember, there is a data bank. If you want to... Uh, if you want to check your account, you go on your phone and you check your account. But your money is not in your phone. Your money is somewhere in a repository that is in a bank. That is a repository that keeps your money, right? You can use what? The link of the bank to go check. So these registries, they are like those links that we have. We had we have Red Hat Red Hat dot access dot com. I think it's dot com or dot io. We have Red Hat dot io and Docker dot io, which host what it host container images. Great. We come to this question: What are container images? It hosts container images. Container images are what they are. The total number of packages, environment, everything that a container needs to be able to run by itself and depend on itself. It, if it needs bash, it is what? Infused into that container image. You see, I represent it here as a CD, as a little CD, because when we download software, it's baked into what? The container images, the, the, the CD, everything is inside, included. So the repository now hosts these images. So you can pull those images and run them now as containers, which takes me back to what I said earlier before. A container is the running instance of a container image, right? A running car is the running instance of what? A motor car or a vehicle, like a car just... When you create a car, it's not running. Once that car starts running, that is a running what? vehicle. We have container images. When you start running it as the container is running, we call it now container. So a container is the running instance of a container image. It is the running instance. You know, this is Usain Bolt running and going. The not so good drawings. Okay, let's jump into the system. First, the first thing you need to know or install is what? Your container tools. So I do a yum install container dash tools. I believe uh, you are using either Rocky Linux or you're using Red Hat and using a local repository of which I am doing. Either of them you will be able to use this, right? When you should do yum install container dash tools, you see it's installing container dash tools. It's installing Portman Docker, which will help, which uh, helps with Docker commands. If you're someone who knows only Docker, it, port, it installs Python 3 because Portman needs Python. Scorpio, great. Scorpio is uh, an addition. It, it is an added thing. It's just like a car and the turbo version of that car or a Toyota and a Toyota XL, which uh, might be a little bit better. An iPhone 15 or a Samsung and a Samsung Plus, right? Scorpio will help us to inspect containers as you will see later. There is builder also that is included in Portman that helps in building containers, that helps with building containers, but that's not our focus. Let's go. All right. Remember we said Portman is agentless. After the installation, the norm will be that, all right, we well, will need to start a service, but no, you don't need to start a service. As you install Portman, the first step is done. Now, let me run containers as agentless. Let me ask you to my user, John, who is already in the system. But before issuing, 
I'll just do SSH and I'll tell you the reason in the later videos. SSH to John at localhost. Localhost j means just this computer. All right, so um, I am right there. So if I do portman info, remember where my container images are coming from. That is my priority at the moment, where my container images are coming from. That's my priority. So if I do portman, portman info, which will give me all the information on everything that I can do, right? I can just click Podman info. Oh, okay. Podman info, right? This is everything, but I don't want to see this. It's way too much complicated. Remember, let's keep it simple. I am interested in my registries. So I do Podman portman uh, info that is portman information info pipe and I grab dash a seven that is seven lines after what after the word registries let me do registries after the word registries right I get exactly seven lines after the words registries one two three four five six seven okay so I'm interested in this these are my registries in other words this is where what registries are being hosted with Red Hat you must log in and with Docker Docker is free you can get containers from Docker free registries dot access dot Red Hat so now the second command we I will introduce you to would be portman search this the command is self-explanatory portman search so we've seen what uh, portman info we've seen portman info portman info and now we are seeing portman search portman search All right, we will see other Portman commands. So we've seen Portman search now, right? Because I have seen that I have red registry.redhat.io. Okay. Let me do Portman search. HTTPD from registry.redhat.io. All right, there's an error. Oh Lord, that's fine. okay so these are I can search right I can search really well I can search it searches from these three repositories that we have registry.access red hat registry.red hat you have no problem searching right you can see the information but now trying to pull it you will need to have access to pull it right if you want to pull from docker yes no problem go on pull you would not have any problem pulling from uh, Docker, but you will have a problem pulling from Red Hat dot access registry dot access dot Red Hat and uh, Red Hat dot IO, which it will tell you that you don't have um, the credentials. But I think uh, lately you can pull from Red Hat dot IO. All right. Let's try to pull this because I don't want to enter on Portman login now. We are just uh, keeping it simple. And the first lesson is just explaining the basics and being able to just run a container. So registry.access.redhat, right? I did a Portman search, it searched for it, right? So if I do Portman pool, So 
tells me trying to pull right it's pulling already but you can't pull from red hat.io you can pull from red hat so what we we are pulling is httpd on rel 7 right rel 7 httpd that is the port the, the container image so if i do portman images right here portman images right we have pulled down one image with the image id this is the image id right here so registry.access.redhat.this httpd with a tag latest you can put a tag a, a, a tag what you want a tag is just like the tag of a cloth right so we've pulled this container easy right now with which command portman pull portman pull we were able to search and pull a container image we are right here we've pulled a container image now when we do portman images it shows us the images that we have pulled down into our system right we have pulled down into our system if you cd to dot config oh sorry if you cd to dot config storage i think it's storage cd to dot config dot config cd to cni okay let me see cd bug ls dash la oh cd to dot local here cd to share containers right cd to containers and storage sorry i took that long long route right you see when you download a container the images come into these directories right it stores it here it stores the data in these directories so if i cd back that's not our focus let me get back to what to it so um so we were on portman images we can see it here running portman images we can see our image right here the next thing we will do is we will just run a container and that will be fine remember we have a b right and they are green green that means you can run two instances of the same thing on a container so on the on the system so if i do a portman run dash d for detach mode because if i do a portman run only and uh, click right here and add the registry portman run this right it will not give me back my screen it will just run it and stay right there right I need to run it in the foreground. I need to run it. So if I do portman ps, like processes, I don't see anything. Why? It ended because I closed the process that I was running. So if I do a portman, portman ps will show you what? Will show you the containers that are running in the system but portman ps-a will show you the containers that are running and the containers that are that have been stopped because remember i did a portman run and i stopped it so if i do a portman ps-a portman ps-a which is everything you see the status of this container is exited this is the container it's exited and uh, the name was Crazy Benz. That was the name of the container. I'm sorry, I had to make it uh, in such a way that everything will get in here. If I do Portman images again. Portman images. I don't know why I'm making so many errors this morning. Okay. Portman images. This is our image. It's still there, right? I do a portman run portman run this time I will put a dash D so that my terminal will be returned to me 
So podman run dash D, I can run from the image ID now. That's why I say understand what the simplicity. Do not try to cram. An image ID, it's like when the police get you or when the police, the, when you go to the cops, what do they do? They ask you for your ID, right? They know your name. This is the, this, this is the name from the repository. This is the ID, right? The ID marks you really well. So I can run from the ID. Podman run dash D. What? This container image ID. Right. Now, if I do a Portman PS, oh, look at that. HTTPD is running already. You see, HTTPD is running already under the name Vigilant Williamson. You see, each time you run a container, if you don't specify the name, it creates a name for you. It automatically creates a name because not no two containers can have the same name if i want to run the content if i do podman ps podman ps dash a podman ps ps you see this is the content the running instance of the container now is what williamson if i do podman run again remember we said we can run the same container a hundred times so far as the OS can, can support it, it will run. So podman run dash D. Now I will put dash dash name. Sorry, dash dash name. I'll put dash dash name. And the name should be Vigilant Williamson. Let's see if two containers can have the same name. Right, two containers on the ship cannot have the same name. Else you'll not know who is Walmart's container, or who owns the container with the name Walmart and who owns the container with the name Amazon. Because if all the names are Amazon, 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 Amazon on the container, right? Even within Amazon, there'll be Amazon ID 1, Amazon container ID 2 and the like, right? Once containers are running, it's the same principle. So if I create the same container, Williamson, let me take the name this time around right either you take the name or the image id you say oops the container name william vigilant williamson is already in use all right well let's say uh remember we started by running a container which has crazy which was crazy bands and um if we do portman ps portman ps we don't see but uh crazy bands right uh, let's say we can run it with crazy bands. Let's see what uh, crazy bands will do. All right, let me call it back. Let me call back the command and put crazy bands. Crazy underscore bands. Let me copy it. It's better to make sure it's the same. All right, run. Oops, the same thing. Right, but when you do Podman PS, you see only Vigilant Williamson running and it's running HTTPD. Hmm, you're confused. All right, well, when you do a Podman PS, remember Podman PS A, you see. Let me clear my screen. When you do a Portman PS dash A, you see that we have two containers. Your Portman PS dash A will show you everything that is containers that have been stopped and containers that are running, containers that have been created and not even what. And it, they are not running. We will see all that. So um, right here, what do I do? I need to remove this container. If I want to use this name Crazy Benz again, I need to make this to go. Right. So I do Portman remove RM what? The name of the container. Crazy Benz. Crazy Benz has been removed. If I do a Portman PS A now, right, I have only one container. And if I call my command now with Crazy Benz and I do run it. Great. Crazy Benz is running. And uh, if I do a portman exec, D, 
this we will see it on the next video i just want to get in but we will see this on the next video we are coming to the end of the video all right pawnman exec dash it interactive shell oh uh, we are executing we are going into what crazy bands you're getting the bash terminal of crazy bands right we are in crazy bands already so if i do ll you say oops there's no ll this container did not come with ll well is there ls yep there is ls which ls it's there which yum oh there is yum okay which which ping wow there's no ping okay clear all right i am in the container remember i've locked in into the container let me do curl curl local host local host on port 80 Oh, connection refuse. Wow. Okay. Call local host on port 80. 8080. 80. Okay, I know why the connection refused. It refused because I use 80. Nobody but uh, the root user can use ports from 10, from 1 to 1024. Any other user can use ports that are above 1024. That is 1024. All right, now we get our content. Let me exit out. Exit. I've exited the container. Now I am now back as user John. If I do my portman PS, I can see my two containers running. And that takes us to the end of this first section, which was trying to uh, introduce just having a field of containers. Then we will start going into the various parts of containerization, like we will divide it into section in uh, part two. Make sure you search for it. We will look at uh, Portman pool, Portman images in spec, Scorpio and the like, and we will go more into details on it. So uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave the comments and uh, give us your opinions and uh, we will work better with you and make sure that everyone is satisfied thank you linux media